Welcome back to part six of practical bash and terminal skills. Today we're going to talk about the grep command. The grep command is one of the oldest but also one of the most useful commands. We'll talk about how to use it, where its benefits are, and maybe also some of the shortcomings like uh, performance and possible alternatives that you can use. So let's dive right into it. The grep command is basically what you want to use whenever you have to either search within files, so not file names, but within the contents of a file, or when you want to filter output. So to get started, I've opened up the Kubernetes uh, repository here, which is a lot of source code that we could uh, search through. Kubernetes uses Go modules, which means there is this Go mod file here, and uh, that's a good a good file to get started. So let's say, let's see if they use something from the Docker repository. We can do that with grep by just typing grep and then typing our search pattern as a regular expression, which can also just be the exact search term. So let's search for Docker and then specify the file we wanna have. So you can see here nicely highlighted that we found uh, Docker quite a bit. Notice that some of those versions here are like version zero. So version zero in semantic versioning is considered before the first stable release. So major one is the, the first stable release. Let's see how many there are. Or first let's let's try to get them. Let's get the, the grab command. And let's say instead of um, Docker here, let's say V0. So that's, a, that's an easy one. Okay, uh, that gets quite a lot of entries. So let us pipe that into word count lines, what we've learned about previously, oh, 272. But you don't actually need to pipe that. You can do that with the grab command on its own by simply specifying the minus C option, which will count for you. And you can see the result is the same. But it gets more interesting. Let's say we'll want to look for everything that's not version zero. So one thing that we could do is negate the search, but that wouldn't be too good because if we look at go mod at the beginning here, there's a lot of files that don't actually specify dependencies. So if we just negate, we, we get all of them as well. So instead, because it uses regular expressions, what we could easily do is say something like, give me version, oh, not zero to zero, zero to nine. And because we want to exclude zero, let's say one to nine. And here we get 167. So as you can see, you can specify any kind of regular expression and it probably helps to quote them so that if you use something like the asterisk, you don't want that, um, you don't want your, your shell to expand that because if the shell were to expand the asterisk, this would just print all the files in the directory. But instead by quoting it, you have, so let's say something like we want V and then any character, any amount of times that will definitely have quite a lot of hits then you can you can put the asterisk in quotes so it's not your shell expanding it, but uh, the crap command. Okay, so before I talked about negating, so let's let's just remove the count here and let's maybe search for Docker again. So here we have Docker, and if we want to negate that search, what we can do is specify the minus V option. And here we get everything that does not contain Docker. Of course, you can also pipe into commands. So let's first say, let us get everything that follows this pattern, a version between zero to nine, then a dot. Now a dot, of course, in a regular expression means any character. So we need to escape it. So let's say again, zero to nine, another dot zero to nine. So this should be our version pattern. Um, of course, we don't want to negate it this time. We want that from code.mod, seems to work. And now let's say out of all those, we want the ones that are not Docker. So now what we can do is pipe into grep. So as you can see here in the first command, we are reading, we're specifying the file name as an input. And now we're reading from standard in. Remember standard in from one of the videos before. If you want to use it, you can pipe into a command. So now let's say when everything that's not Docker and just to verify that it worked, let's do a minus C here. And without that, we would be at 405. So that's those uh, 11 lines that were about Docker. So since you can pipe into it, let's go, go back to, to this one. What you could also do is say cat a file then pipe into a grep. Then of course we need to, no, I need VI to edit this, otherwise I'm going insane in the shell here. So uh, you can also do that. It's probably kind of useless in this case, 
because um, yeah, this I, I think the the shell uh, check would even say useless cat here um, because you can of course do it on uh, grep directly, but uh, there's a situation where you can't. So for example, if you have something like this, so if you want to pipe this into grep and let's say give me everything related to go then you get a logo. Okay, and of course, since it's regular expression, you could just say, give me go with a dot maybe. And that works. So, so far we've searched uh, from standard in or we've searched through a single file. What you can also do is something like this. Now this will error, I'll explain why in a second, but let's try it first. So what we're saying is um, run the grep command, search for Docker on this current directory. And grep says, well, current directory is a directory. It is not wrong, but what it actually means is you have to allow a recursive search. So here we're getting quite a lot of files that contain Docker. Let's uh, keep that search running for a bit. Should have probably gone for a less common <laughs> term than Docker. Okay, but anyway, here we got a bit of of um, Docker stuff. And now let's maybe say, for demonstration's sake, let us only search this file for now. So let's have that one again. Uh, grab, and then again, we wanted to search for Docker, but just in this file. So what we're getting now is um, these two entries. And it's a bit hard to tell what they mean without any kind of context. But what we can do is simply add context. And for this, we have the minus C option, which is context. And if we just specify it without, okay, it doesn't work without anything uh, because now it takes Docker as an argument. So if we uh, specify, let's say three, it will add three lines before and three lines after each result. So if we go here to our first result, Docker one, two, three, and uh, to the bottom two, three lines, there we go. Then you see this dash line here, which is um, specifying that the first result ends. Here's the new result. And again, we have three lines to the top and bottom. If you don't want all um, both directions, you can also say A, as in lines after, which will print three lines after the result. So again, here, here we have this plus three, and then new search result here plus three. Additionally, the same way that there is minus A, there is also minus B, which gives you before. So this is our starting line plus three. Ah, okay, sorry, the, the shell is breaking the line here. So this is actually, so this is the line one, two, three. Now it fits. I was a bit confused there for a second. And of course here again. So my, my shell is, is wrapping uh, this line. This is actually one line. So these are uh, the commands. When you search recursively, a very common pattern that you would see something like this, R and I. R, recursive, we've already um, say, seen that. N is uh, the line number. It will point not uh, print not just the file, but uh, the number, uh, the line number where the, the search result was found. And I is case insensitive. So it matches both lowercase and uppercase. So as you could see, um, with large repositories, and the Kubernetes repository definitely is a large one, it can sometimes take quite a bit of time. So let's do something like time to time, uh, how long it takes. Grab, let's do a minus C and minus R for recursive. Let's search for Docker again and search uh, the current directory. So let's give that a shot. This is much faster now. It's only counting, not printing out the results, but nevertheless, it takes some time. Let's see how much time it takes. Oh, wow, it actually takes longer than expected, probably because I'm recording now. Uh, there we go, 27 seconds. So, wow, that was uh, definitely longer than I expected. And you can see here that it used 35% CPU usage. So it's maybe not the best use of our resources here. We can uh, use an alternative. So there are commands that have a very similar API to grep, but are faster. One is the Silver Searcher. Um, shortened as AG, as in the element of uh, silver. So let's give that a shot. 
that was considerably faster at only uh, 1.5 seconds total and used 136% CPU. So uh, that of course means 100% um, of one CPU core and 36% uh, of another, not, not exactly, but in total. So that's why it can be more than 100% um, percent here. And then there's also RG, which is uh, called RipGrep, which is written in Rust and supposedly even faster. And it took 1.2 seconds and used 182 uh, CPU usage. So um, both of these, by the way, make use of more parallelism while I'm not recording. But right now, I think my recording tool is already occupying like uh, an entire CPU core. So um, that skews the result a bit. This is in no way scientific, of course, but I think you can see the, the vast difference. So the grep command is the one that you should learn because this is the, the API that's common everywhere, but in everyday use, um, it might make sense to replace it with either uh, the silver searcher or a uh, rip crap. So you just learned one of the most useful commands. I hope you liked it. Uh, in the next video, we're also talking about another very common and very useful command that you should definitely know about. So see you in part seven. Thanks for watching and bye.